It's simple, really. Phospho gypsum. Gypsum produced making phosphate fertilizer, stored in a big pile called a gyp stack. Maybe you've driven by and wondered. On Highway 643 near Redwater, an hour from Edmonton, Alberta, not pretty, and rumored to be radioactive. Boy, that's really big. Yes, it is. 15 stories high, a kilometer wide, two kilometers long. The stacked byproduct of a half century of making fertilizer in that agrium plant back there. This is the story of the stack you see before you. You see, when a farmer harvests his crop for food, nutrients from the soil go with the crop. If he is to have a bountiful harvest again next year, he will need to replace soil nutrients. The three main nutrients are nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. To get phosphorus, you mine phosphate rock. The rock is broken up, pulverized, and shipped in by train to our big fertilizer plant at Redwater. We mix the acid, uh, sulfuric acid, with the phosphate rock in that uh, green stripe building right there. We take the solids that are left over, mix it with water, and that's actually our gypsum. That's actually the, the byproduct that we're standing on here. Uh, we pump it back all the way out to here. So that's why there's all this water on top. Water mixed with leftover gypsum is pumped out onto the ponds on top of the stack. We go on about our work of managing the ponds, moving our piping. Over time, the gypsum settles to the bottom, and our pipes draw the water back to the plant to be reused. This stack of gypsum is managed, shaped and reshaped as more is added and dewatered, and there is lots of it. To produce one ton of phosphorus fertilizer, Agria must produce five tons of phosphogypsum. Gypsum without phosphate you probably know. It's what wallboard in your home is made from. Gypsum. Gypsum chemically is hydrated calcium sulfate. Phosphogypsum is gypsum left over from phosphate rock after the phosphorus is removed. It can be a little like jelly till the water runs out. Sometimes our neighbors must wonder if this whole thing is stable. It is stable. Magnified a whole lot, our gypsum is really crystals, which is great when you want to stack it up. Gypsum is an excellent building material. It, because of the shapes of its crystals, it interlocks and it's very stable. Theoretically, we could have built our gyp stack as a big square. But they didn't build it as a square because the land available to build on at the time wasn't solid enough for that, particularly at the edge or toe. Our gyp stack was stepped in order to alleviate the pressure on the toe, the most vulnerable spot on the gyp stack. Another thing, and you can see it in this shot, gypsum crusts as it dries. You almost need a shovel to penetrate it. That means the powder doesn't blow around in the wind. Agrium's been storing gypsum out here for two generations, so how the stack started is hard to show you. However, where the stack gets lower is where we expanded the stack base a few years ago, and we can show you that. It would be built in four phases, starting with phase one. The terrain would first be shaped as a huge basin. Agrium would run vents at the base, allowing naturally occurring gases to escape from under the stack. Then the whole thing would be covered with a thick impervious liner so that no stack water could get down and contaminate groundwater. Drains would be placed under where the stack would be to capture any acidic water that drained down through the stack. Neighbors and regulators expected this to be done right, and getting the infrastructure in place would be a big task. As grade was established, soil compaction would be tested hundreds and hundreds of times to be sure the stack base would always be solid. Around the perimeter, dozens of sets of sampling wells were drilled to monitor groundwater around the stack. Here is one of the under drains going in on top of the black liner. 
The liner is very thick plastic, laid in big wide strips, each seam double welded and tested against any leakage. Today those under drains capture and carry away stacked water. It's monitored and will be used again in plant processes. Most people presume this is the only gyp stack they've ever seen. More likely it's the only one they recognize. Look at this hillside right in the city of Calgary. This is a gyp stack and it's a big one. It's about the size of our stack at Redwater. The difference is it is decommissioned and it has grass growing on it. Nobody much seems to notice it because of that. Let's hop on over to our other gyp stack right in Fort Saskatchewan. People drive by this every day and mostly never know what it is. This is an inactive stack. Vegetation grows naturally just like on every other hill around. Right buddy? Canada is not the only place in the world with stacks of phosphogypsum. Wherever phosphate fertilizer is manufactured, you could find gyp stacks. Australia's got them. Over 80 countries in the world have phosphogypsum. Africa, the Middle East, and in Europe, lots of gyp stacks. The state of Florida has more phosphate deposits and more gyp stacks than anywhere else in the world. Major work is being done here by some of the world's best mines. Mike Lloyd has been involved with phosphate fertilizer for over 50 years. Doctors Brian Berkey and Julian Hilton are the principal investigators in an organization called Stack Free, dedicated to making good use of phosphogypsum now stored in stacks. And the University of South Florida Polytechnic's Phosphate Research Institute, among other things, manages research into beneficial uses of phosphogypsum. For example, when they finish compacting the day's trash, most landfills will purchase soil and spread a daily covering over the trash. But if they'd covered it with phosphogypsum, it'd be less expensive and the trash-eating bugs would love it. The bugs, the anaerobic bugs, use the sulfate in phosphogypsum as an energy source. So they take the organic, they eat the organic using the sulfate as an energy source, and we've demonstrated that you could recover 50% of the volume of the landfill in less than five years. So you could build one half the number of landfills that you now build at the very minimum. And what if you didn't have to buy thousands of truckloads of gravel every year to build and maintain roads? Well, a study by the European Commission finds that phosphogypsum with its crystal structure is just great for road building. The studies were extraordinarily successful. The life cycle cost of the road, that means over a 25, 30 year period, how much does it cost you to own the road, was substantially reduced. So it's one of the best mixes that you can use. But they saved 60% of other resources that would otherwise have been gobbled up by that road. Phosphogypsum is being used all around the world in all kinds of ways. Here are trucks in Brazil lining up to load phosphogypsum and put it to use. Tunisia is experimenting with building homes with phosphogypsum. After all, plaster of Paris is made from gypsum. They've put wallboard with phosphogypsum into some homes. Here's one in India. This big project in China is to be made from phosphogypsum. Many countries use it for agriculture. This was a field of cotton before they applied phosphogypsum to condition the soil. Same field after gypsum soil conditioning. Around the world, the top four uses today are agriculture, construction materials, landfills and waste handling, and road building. There is occasionally the perception that phosphogypsum could be hazardous. When you dig phosphate rock out of the ground, it often contains trace amounts of naturally occurring radiation. But is it a real danger? It really isn't very hazardous. Uh, it contains trace amounts of radioactivity, very, very small amounts. If you back even a few feet away from the stack, the radiation won't reach you. We have borrowed a radiation meter. There is almost always some background radiation wherever you are. This isn't scientific, but it'll give us an indication. 
Beeping becomes a little more pronounced around the smoke detector, especially when you hold the detector's sensor right up to it. Okay, on to phosphogypsum. Less response than the smoke detector. Sometimes old dishes contain radioactivity. This one has lots of it. So far the phosphogypsum has had about the lowest response. Kind of makes you wonder what this radiation fuss is all about. And the glow-in-the-dark clock Grandpa used to wake up with. Unlike Canada and the rest of the world, the U.S. government requires that phosphogypsum be sequestered in stacks, not put to good use. The fertilizer industry is very important to the state of Florida, where there are a billion tons of phosphogypsum stored in two dozen stacks, with life going on normally around them. Mr. Crocodile here seems just fine in the shadow of his stack. Agrium sees a definite future for phosphogypsum, especially in agriculture. We bought an acreage and I love to garden, but it's a very heavy clay soil, so I've... We are with Agrium's phosphogypsum reuse expert at her home near Edmonton, Alberta. Just to give you an idea is when you dig this, you get a great big clump. It's hard like a rock. It's hard for roots to grow through. It's hard to get a good potato crop. So here's a place in the garden where I brought home phosphogypsum to use as a soil amendment. And as you can see, if you just grab handfuls of it, it's very light and fluffy and has a fine kind of particulate texture. And it makes it very easy for our plant roots. The calcium in the gypsum improves the soil structure dramatically, where the sulfate in the gypsum is a plant nutrient. So you're improving the physical properties of the soil and you're improving the fertility. Imagine then what gypsum can do for the modern farm. The new barn is ready and the first bedding is going into the stalls for the cattle. The farmer uses wood chips as a bedding base to reduce odors and sustain his livestock's health and to later nourish his crops, the farmer has added lots of agrium phosphogypsum. It's added as an absorbent to keep the stalls drier for the cows. It helps us manage the somatic cell count and overall, overall health of the, of the cow herd from that perspective. Bedding in the dairy barn ends up going out through the slurry and utilized as a nutrient in the fields. The only nutrient missing is sulfur, and gypsum is, is high in sulfur and, and takes care of that need, giving us a more balanced nutrient product when, when the byproduct of bedding and manure waste and manure management is utilized as a nutrient for our cropping part of the business. Farmer Jeff applies gypsum directly to his fields as a soil conditioner, especially where the land is low. And to his windrows of compost, he regularly tills in gypsum. Jeff measures his nutrients so he knows what he's producing, and his ideal balance is 15% gypsum in compost. Our stack at Redwater is large, obvious. It's very difficult to vegetate an active stack because it changes in size and shape as gypsum is added and moved and dewatered. But remember when we talked about the step shape of the stack? This also is the foundation for the final shape of it that we can vegetate at a later date. Exactly. For a decade we've been doing reclamation research with the University of Alberta at our deactivated gyp stack in Fort Saskatchewan. This is a coring machine. How much soil, we wanted to know, should we put on the gypsum to help plants grow best? I'm going to slice this core open, mm -hmm. and I'm going to see uh, how deep the roots have gone. There were surprises. We found plants can get things they need from either soil or gypsum, and... One of the neatest things we found is that plants that are growing on a thinner depth of soil actually do better than plants growing on thick depths of soil because when they root into the gypsum they get more water and they're just much happier in a dry year. But we wondered if a different approach would be even better and a grad student named Jenna provided our answer. Her experiments measured mixing the soil with the phosphogypsum. In the greenhouse she would try varying proportions. In the lab test things like how water moves through the mixtures. 
This would be a precise, controlled series of experiments. At about the same time, Agrium had an opportunity to fill in an inactive pond the size of about eight NHL hockey rinks. From a nearby stack, over 60,000 cubic meters of gypsum was removed, reducing the level of that stack and using it to fill the depression that was the pond. Jenna's greenhouse and lab work would provide lots of detailed findings, of course, but basically... What I discovered is when you blend soil and phosphogypsum, you get better plant growth than just soil or phosphogypsum alone. So, agrium would spread topsoil on the gypsum surface that was once the pond. About six inches of topsoil would be best. And using a machine that could rip down deep, the soil on top was mixed with the newly laid phosphogypsum below. Three different passes of machinery would refine the mix to get a blended surface that was optimal for plants. And when grass was planted, it grew very well, just as Jenna's findings predicted. And then along came Tim. That's him with the Visiting Canadian Land Reclamation Association tour. Tim's with the Canadian Forest Service. He would plant trees. Tim and the Canadian Forest Service breed trees, create protocols to grow trees quickly. This is how tall the tree was in year one. Up here is how tall it was after year two. Grow trees quickly in response to climate change, to take carbon out of the air. So with these peculiar machines, Forest Service folks would take the cuttings from the trees they had bred and would embed them into the soil gypsum mixture. Within a few weeks of planting, the cuttings had sprouted. And in three months, new trees flourished. The trees grew as well in the fossil gypsum topsoil mix as they do on regular agricultural lands, perhaps even better. Tim also figures the gypsum in the soil makes timely water more available to plants. So now we can embrace our gypsum. We have a formula. This larger, former stack in Fort Saskatchewan will soon be a forest. It'll be a while before we reclaim the big stack near Redwater, but we know one day it can be a green hillside with trees, grasses, a viewpoint that will stand out on the landscape of Alberta. So that's the story of fossil gypsum at Agrium. Thanks for watching.